Today I want to tell you about the results of a truly remarkable study that tells us a lot about how our future with artificial intelligence is going to look. Large language models fed with a body of existing scientific literature predicted with amazing accuracy the results of studies that they were not trained on. Yes, that's right, they knew the results of scientific studies without even doing them. Current AIs that are mostly large language models have a huge advantage over human scientists for a simple reason. They can read more of the scientific literature faster. This can make a big difference because the number of scientific publications is increasing exponentially, too fast for any human to follow. Indeed, the entire physics literature has doubled since I made my PhD. I believe that the rapid growth of scientific literature is one of the reasons why scientists specialize into niches and it isn't helpful to knowledge discovery. It makes you suspect that scientists must have missed a lot of connections that are just there, waiting to be found. The idea that there is hidden knowledge in the scientific literature isn't new. Already in the 1980s, the computer scientist Dan Swanson had a clever idea. He studied the distribution of references in scientific papers and found that, on occasion, studies on two separate research topics would have few references between the two topics, but would refer to a common third topic. He speculated that this indicates so far unknown links between the separate research topics. And indeed, Swanson found a concrete example for this. In the 1980s, scientists Scientists knew that certain types of fish oils benefit blood vessels. They had also found in another line of research that patients with Raynaud's syndrome do better if their circulatory health improves. This led Swanson to conjecture that patients with Raynaud's syndrome could benefit from fish oil. In 1993, a clinical trial demonstrated that this hypothesis was correct. You may find this rather obvious, and I'd agree it's not a groundbreaking insight, but this isn't the point. The point is that the scientific community missed it. It was right there in front of their eyes, but no one noticed. That was in the 1980s, but scientists have built on this idea since with better analyses. A few years back, a group of researchers from California studied the material science literature with a simple neural network. They did not, like Swanson, look for relations between research studies by using citations, but they did a word analysis of paper abstracts. They found that a number of thermoelectric materials were associated with the word thermoelectric before anyone knew they were thermoelectric. The knowledge was in the word relations of the literature before any human noticed. They also used the existing literature to predict new thermoelectric materials. But that was before the new large language models were unleashed onto the world. And this new study is now testing out how much hidden knowledge we have in neurobiology. They trained several large language models, including OpenAI's GPT-4 and Meta's Llama 2, on more than 120,000 full-text articles from neuroscience journals published between 2002 and 2022. Then they recruited about 170 neuroscience experts and presented both the AIs and the human participants with two versions of a neuroscience abstract, one original and one altered with incorrect results, and asked them to identify the correct one. General purpose LLMs like GPT-4 got it right in about 81% of cases, significantly outperforming human experts who averaged about 63%. A fine-tuned model further improved the AI performance to almost 85% accuracy. The point of doing this is not to say that these 80% of studies are useless because we already knew the result. No, the point is that this sort of analysis could be very, very useful to identify what the most promising new studies are. There ought to be key questions that are likely to unlock further progress, and I believe that these and similar analyses will be able to identify them. I know that this all sounds somewhat lame, it's just some literature analysis, but I really believe that this can solve a big problem. It's because humans can't digest all this literature. They can't draw connections that would be relevant for further progress. I really think that funding agencies should use AI-powered analyses 
to identify what research to fund. About 10 years ago, I wrote a proposal for the European Research Council to do such an analysis with a somewhat more difficult technique than the one that was used for this study. My proposal was declined on the grounds that I don't know much about data analysis. Fair enough. But of course, the reason I applied for funding was to hire someone who knows how to do this stuff. And since I didn't get the funding, it just wasn't done. But that's okay, because it won't be long and then an AI will do it on its own. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Bina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.